Welcome back to Brave Goals. In this series, we're focused on how to bring your tech idea to life. In the previous video, we took our wireframes and stripped those down to identify the most essential set of features that we would need for a minimal viable product. We identified 10 features that make up the core experience of MemeTag, our social media game that we're building in this series uh, as an example of how to bring your tech idea to life. Now we're ready to actually come up with the system design that's gonna power that. That's what's behind the hood of our app, right? We have to come up with the architectures that we'll need to implement to have a functional prototype. Um, if you're not an engineer, if you're not a, or a technical person, or if you're not interested in building out those skills, this is the point where you'll wanna find a collaborator who can do this for you, who can, using their understanding of the app that, that you're looking to build, come up with the architecture that, that's good enough to have a prototype that will be able to, uh, you can use to get into the hands of real users and get some validation. Um, now, I wanna challenge myself to do this in 10 minutes because I wanna reinforce that this doesn't have to be perfect and this is a starting point. So let's see how much we can get done in 10 minutes of system design to satisfy the 10 features that we identified for our social media game. Cool, so let's set the timer for 10 minutes and let's get started. Uh, so here are the 10 features that we're going to implement for our MVP uh, that we identified in the previous video. Actually, since this how to play is really just gonna be an informative screen, just static text or images that display there, we don't need to worry about that for the uh, MVP. So let's get started and think about what functionality uh, we need for our system design. And I'm a fan of functional programming. So I'm gonna think in terms of inputs and outputs for each of the, the concrete functions that we'll need. Um, and we're just gonna build on that incrementally. So let's start with this connect to Instagram. Um, previously, when I was investigating what type of functionality is supported by the Instagram API, I know that their uh, authorization window will return me, uh, allow a user to log into Instagram using their credentials and return to me their Instagram user ID and some other basic profile information from their basic user, uh, basic graph display API. I think that's what they call it. Um, so when you need to, let's say you're, there are two flows that you're opening this app from the homepage. You're either a returning user, that's a known user to our meme tag app, or you're coming in as a new user that needs to register. Uh, for that new user register flow, um, we're gonna have a function that signs you up and that's going to take a phone ID. It will uh, initiate the Instagram off window, um, which will return us an Instagram ID. And maybe that's good for now. And the outputs, we want to return your meme tag user ID. If you are a known user, this is my returning user function. So the input here is going to be your meme tag user ID and the output, right? Cause we were going from the beginning screen to see all the games that you're in. Once I have a meme tag user ID, I'm gonna return a map of the all of the games that you're involved in. So that map is gonna be like um, a list of game IDs where each game, each of these objects has a list of Actually, that would be the actual ID. And inside here would be a list of all the user IDs for all the users that are in that game with you. And there could be another. If you're in multiple games, you're going to have another one of these. Et cetera. Now moving on to, I just want to start gameplay. Before we go on to play, because I'm thinking that might be the same as choosing a game, let's invite others to play. So a function for inviting others to play, I essentially want the function to um, deliver a link to gameplay. So it'll be some link that has a game ID that when you send that to someone, it takes them through a signup flow and it wants to take this game ID such that when they, they sign up and they become a mean tag um, player, we take them directly into the game that this user is inviting them to. So that means for sign up flow here for new users, this function should also take an optional game ID. Whereby if I'm coming in as a new user from this link, I go into the sign up flow provided my phone ID, the game ID is passed. And when I auth into Instagram and return the Instagram user ID, 
that our application can output the user ID. Um, and I wonder if the app might need a static link to join the gameplay. But I think if we just return the user ID and we already associated that user ID with the, the game ID as a part of this function, um, then we can keep this uh, output as just one value being the meme tag user ID. So let's go with that for now. I think play is going to be the same as choosing a game, right? This just triggers the play function. So with the play function, it's gonna have an input of a game ID. Input the game ID and that starts um, new set of rounds. Let's think through that. So when I choose a game, it's going to show a list of challenges. So I want this output to be an object that has the round ID and a set of challenges. And I need to know who are the users that are in this game. So this function is going to take the game ID, actually the game ID does represent, it identifies the users. And for that game ID, the set of users is going to start um, around for that game, right? Because this way we'll have a history of, let's say there are five rounds per gameplay. Um, I can have multiple games of five rounds for, associated to a given group of friends, a, a given game ID. So I take the game ID and I return the round ID and the set of challenges and then the mobile app will take those challenges and, uh, and the round ID. Um, and perhaps there's also some metadata in the round. Let's call that out. Um, such as like what number of round this is, who won the last round. Um, maybe we want to put the scores in there when we get down. We're at six minutes, so and we're only on number four. Let's see if we can go a little faster. So when I choose a challenge, it's going to take a challenge ID and a game ID. And the output is going to be a response ID. Let's just send that to the device because I think that might be necessary when people respond to a challenge. So in order to support the ability to view the challenge that was selected by a judge, um, every person uh, on their own app will just need to know the response ID. And with that, we can get the, the challenge information. We might actually want to send all of that down, right? I can include challenge ID. And depending on what we end up designing for this system, um, how much memory we want to send over the wire, we might want to include metadata with that as well. Metadata on the challenge. And that's just going to be a push. I don't think we need to have anything returned here. Right, to view the challenge, I just need to receive this information. So I'm just querying to get info on the challenge. Let's make that clear for now, just returning metadata on that challenge. Now, responding to a challenge, this is interesting because we have two flows. One where you respond by tagging some content in Instagram, and that's the more simple uh, way of responding. So that's what we're going to do for our, um, our prototype here, because the other option is to upload a file to use a GIF keyboard, GIFI keyboard to find some media and then upload that media. But we don't want to do that for our prototype because we can just use Instagram. So to respond to a challenge, we actually just have to provide instructional information to the user on how to do this. And they're going to go to, they're going to find their content that they want to respond with. And they're going to add a comment tagging uh, the account of our, our of our app. And we will be able to associate that the media on that Instagram post with the user because we'll have the user ID of the person who tagged us in the comment and we'll know which round they're in based on their user ID. But if you all the challenge responses, that's going to be a similar function to what we have here, but it's just going to return Meme tag formatted, the formatted for the app, challenge responses. So this service that we're, this function that we're implementing here is going to have to do some, some transformation on the content that, that we receive and to make that uh, formatted appropriately. 
when voting for your favorite challenge so that's just the interaction that we called out is going to be a double tap on the app right so we could let's start with the response id and the we didn't give this an id here so let's say this is tag response id we're going to input that and the output's going to be the score for that item and to keep track of scores actually we'll just need to get the score here so in this case we're going to return uh, the response id as input will be the response id and output will be a score and i'm just thinking of the uh, specific functionality here um, not designing the service whether these are going to be um, what the communication channel is going to be is it going to be a web socket is it going to be like http or long pole i'm just thinking about the ins and outs of the different functions and then we get get into system design um, and that's 10 minutes <laughs> that went by really fast uh, so what do we not do here so we didn't declare a winner um, but so we have all the information that we'll need to be able to declare a winner because we're keeping track of the scores here um, uh, so this function that is keeping track of the scores it's keeping track so we're keeping that somewhere we need to write this to some sort of database and this function that's going to declare a winner um, well it's, it's going to have to uh, recognize when all of the users have responded um, such that all the votes are cast for a given response id and then send that uh, winner information to the device the only output is going to be here is the uh, response id and the challenge id no the meme tag response id and some metadata associated with that that we can use to identify um, who is the winner what was the score um, and that should be all the information that we need in the app uh, so this is just a, a obviously a very quick rough draft of what are the ins and outs of the functions that we'll need to satisfy this um, and what we can do now is map this onto um, a visual design of the system and get into the details of what type of communication channels are we going to use um, what are the different components involved so um, kind of building on top of these functions and grouping them by um, by their uh, similar functionality into different types of services and thinking about what are the architectures for those services so let's do that next all right so i've switched over now to OmniGraffle. this is a tool that i like to use when creating system designs or any any kind of diagrams really um, and the tool that we were in previously, that was Sublime Text 3, which is a, a simple text editor. Um, well, it's actually doesn't, I can, shouldn't say simple. It's a really powerful text editor that, that you can use for everything from writing simple notes to coding applications. Um, I like to use it for simple cases like just creating text files and writing notes. Um, and now we're over in OmniGraffle. And what I've done here is I took the uh, the function descriptions that we created over those 10 minutes and I mapped those onto a, a visual diagram of wherever those functions live, um, coming up with the different components that we live in the system and then thinking about the communication channels between each of those different components. Um, so just as a quick overview here um, at a high level for the design of our uh, minimal viable product for our prototype for our social media game meme tag. So these images on the left, these are what represent our the different users in a game, playing a game. Um, and I'll just talk over the different components I have here. So I created this identity service that's going to handle user sign up and identify returning users. And the mobile app will just communicate over HTTP and that just be a simple request response, TCP connection, um, and to identify users and to sign users up. Um, this service is also connected to the hub of communication for our app. I'll describe this gateway as a communication hub because gateway is going to talk to all of the services, all of these components in our application um, and, and have a really fast uh, push and let's describe it as like push pull. You can think of it that way. WebSocket connection between uh, uh, every application on the user's phones and our message bus. And our message bus is like a, a publish subscribe um, a component that allows for event-driven communication channels between components. So this message bus here is going to, um, for each service down here at the bottom, I have a gameplay controller, what's going to handle as people respond to challenges and 
um, the different stages of a round as a round changes states as people respond to select challenges and all of that. That's going to be driven by this gameplay controller. This gameplay controller is going to subscribe to a specific theme uh, subject in the message bus. The challenge manager is going to handle the creation of challenges, the selection of challenges, storing challenges in the database, all of that. And it's going to subscribe to a specific challenge uh, topic in the in the message bus. I've just used three words to describe the same thing. Topic, subject, and theme. Um, it's all the same thing here in the, the message bus. And the response formatter as well. So when I tag a uh, an image in Instagram and I want to get that image, I have to go out and talk to the public internet, talk to Instagram, Instagram's API, get that image, format that in some way that's going to be appropriate for display on the mobile device and, and also communicating with um, a specific subject in the uh, message bus here. Subscribe to that and talking to our gateway, the communication hub. Gateway is also talking to, I just separated out a, a distinct service for a game lookup. So the ability to associate a given user to a list of the different groups that they're in, the groups are representing the games and getting all of that from our, our repository here. I'm thinking right now we'll just have like three tables or three collections of databases, uh, databases, three collections of document type, uh, depending on what we try and what we decide to use there for storage, like a, a simple NoSQL storage, or um, if we want to have a really defined schema, I'll probably start off with no uh, NoSQL just because I don't, I think I'll want to store uh, games as like complete documents with all that information instead of breaking it down into explicit relationships between tables. Um, just have a document storage or store that. And that's probably what I'll do in the beginning. Um, but I don't want to spend too much time here talking through all of this because this is just for the, the prototype. There might be some things here that we may end up evolving um, once we want to actually turn this into the, the fully realized system that we're going to implement. But I think this is good enough for our prototype to get started. So the next step is I'm going to use this as a map to actually build out the, the prototype of our minimal viable product for for our, our social media game. And then with that, we'll be able to get that into the hands of real users. So this is going to be my guide for implementing that. Um, and I'll work through that and, and have more details on that in the next video. Um, and if this looks a little bit overwhelming, that's that's totally fine. As I mentioned in the introduction, coming up with the system architecture is going to be something that's going to require your your technical counterpart if you're not the engineer or not the, the, the technical person uh, behind your project. So this is when you want to look for the collaborator there to, to help you out with this. Yes, I'm happy with that. I got the system design. Uh, I felt like that was a, a solid evolution of a really rough sketch of the architecture that we came up with in 10 minutes. That was good enough to come up with the design of what we can use to build out the prototype. Um, so that's going to be the next step, actually using that uh, system architecture that we created in OmniGraffle as a guide for actually implementing the, the prototype, building that out. And then we'll be able to get that into the use, into user's hands and get some feedback on MemeTag, our social media game. If you're interested interested in being a part of that, drop your email at bravelabs.com and you can join the, the early VIP beta and help me validate this idea. Join and see if this game will be something that you like to do. I'd love to get your feedback on it. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Again, check the description below for some helpful links. I'm putting references for all the tools that I mentioned throughout the video. Add a comment to let me know if you have any specific question. If I can help you out on your journey to building out your tech idea. And, and thanks for watching. Please hit subscribe, follow along as we continue to develop our social media game. And, and thanks, thanks for being a part of this. Uh, I'm having some fun uh, doing this as a challenge, right? And doing this publicly in front of you guys and helping you along your journey of bringing your tech idea to life. Uh, remember, you gotta be brave to accomplish your goals. So that's what we're doing here. Thanks for watching.